Welcome to the Delaware Public Archives. We're one of the oldest public archives in the nation. We've been in existence since 1905, and we are the repository for Delaware's history, and it's particularly its public history. If you were either born, if you went to school, if you married, if you owned property, and if you hit that last uh, chapter in the book of that you might pass in Delaware, we have records of you in this particular uh, facility. But also we have a big repository of materials here, historic related materials. We have over 10.4 million documents, over 800,000 photographs, and over 6,600 volumes that deal specifically with the economic, the political, the social history of Delaware. I want to go and take a little bit look back into our vault as part of our rare collection is a book of poems by John Laughlin, and he was a Delaware author and it's, it's, it's a beautiful selection of over 200 poems that are contained therein. We're also very pleased to note that with, within this particular book we actually have a CDV of the author himself which is rare to have both uh, together um, in one particular unit like that. Our next book here is a book that's written uh, in 1755 and it relates to the uh, establishment of the Swedes coming into Delaware. They were one of the colonial um, peoples that actually came here um, to settle along with the Dutch um, and in that particular part. What's interesting to note here, um, you'll see a special type of binder or cover that we use. This is acid-free paper, and they're specially made by staff in the archive to precisely fit the book. You want the book to be able to fit into such a cover like that so that it's not loose and you start um, messing with the, the binding that could happen at that time or loosening uh, materials there. One of the more significant that I feel is a book in relationship to the Underground Railroad, and it's written by William Still. And what makes this book so unique, it's a history and a, and, and a story about the Underground Railroad, and it's written by an African American. So we have that book here, it's in wonderful condition, and it's used very much by researchers as they relate um, and look at stories as it relates to the Underground Railroad. Next book is, it's a compendium of scenes um, the Delaware Scene by Jack Lewis. And you'll find in here some beautiful illustrations of his, his particular prints and paintings that he had uh, for Delaware. He was a famous uh, Delaware portrait artist and artist in general uh, for Delaware. And his works are, are uh, displayed throughout many state buildings and private homes in Delaware. And this was a very limited edition of the materials that he was going to be, um, that he painted. This document and book has a combination of a document with it and a book. It's a beautiful surveyor's guide as it relates to one of our cities in Delaware, uh, Nanakoke City. And it was in relationship, they were measuring uh, property lines for the, for the train uh, service here. But what you'll notice here is the beautiful coloring that they have here and how this particular book was an actual fold out of a map at the time. So this is, is, is used a lot by individuals that are researching property or homes that, that someone had in that particular area. So this is one of the gems of our, of our collection as well. And of particular interest, is the state Bible. Uh, we may be the only state, I can't say that for certainty, that has a state Bible. This Bible was uh, printed back in the uh, 1530s in, in France, and it was a gift to Delaware back in the uh, early 1700s. And it's been used continuously since about 1847 where governors uh, would take their oath of office. And it was last used in uh, January of this year when Governor Jack McKell 
uh, became uh, governor and swore his allegiance to the state. And it's brought into the ceremony with, with great pomp and circumstance because of its historical significance. And as I said, all governors since about 1847 have um, taken their oath of office in this, except one governor in 1901. Um, he was a Quaker, and he just only affirmed the oath. He did not swear um, on the Bible. So those are some of our uh, books that we have here uh, that are in our rare book collection. Again, these are non-circulating books for the simple reason because wear and tear on them could, could damage them, but they are available for individuals to look at uh, by appointment. The care of these books and how books come in um, is a beginning and ongoing process. When we get a donation, let's say, of a significant uh, book of this nature, it goes through various processing steps. We'll make sure it's clean. We'll use certain types of, of materials, get out any dust fragments and straighten any pages that might be um, folded, uh, take out any uh, material. Sometimes people used to leave um, bookmarks in them or, or paper clips or something, and, and we'll remove all those things. And we'll dust the jackets off and the covers off, and we'll make primary types of boxes, acid-free boxes, uh, to put those in. We've talked about the rail volumes that we've had in our uh, vault area. We've also um, mentioned a little bit about documents uh, that we conserve and preserve in the uh, Delaware Public Archives. But there's a means to that. There's certain tools that are specific to the archival profession that uh, our curators and our processing archivists use in their daily tasks as they relate to conservation and preservation of these materials. I'd like to introduce you to one of our processing archivists, Ms. Sarah Dennison, who's going to describe some of the tools that we use. Here we are in the processing area. This is where we work with documents that are either new to the institution or things that we've had for a while that are, haven't been formally processed, organized, made accessible to the people who come here to do research. So this area is used to triage, to clean, to organize the documents and photographs and other things that we get here at the archives. Often we work with cotton gloves, that's to protect the documents and photographs that we touch um, from our fingerprints and oils and any other fun things that uh, live on our fingers. Also for processing, we use tools like this micro spatula. It helps us work with small um, folds and creases and, and other little things that um, we need to fix before they are formally housed in acid-free materials. Things can get a little dirty back here, as you might imagine, years and years of um, just dust and mold and any other creepy crawly things that come in with documents that have lived in people's basements. So large brushes like this um, with some fine soft bristles are great for cleaning um, big documents or even just cleaning up the table once we're done. We do make custom enclosures here at the archives. That means um, boxes that fit special sized items. Sometimes things will be oversized, undersized. You can't buy boxes that come in those dimensions. So we do make things in house. It's kind of fun. Um, we use items like this bone folder to make creases in corrugated board. It's a fancy name for cardboard. Cellulose sponges are a way that we manually clean documents and um, other items. It, it creates a safe amount of friction that we can take dirt and other materials off of um, paper and other delicate items. Our philosophy here is how do we best make our materials accessible to the individual based on what their learning requirements are and their needs are.